So yeah. it'll just be recording the whole time. So I've already hit record. I've seen, I've noticed a lot of um, podcasts. It's hard to actually start a podcast when you start chatting like this. It's already started. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, Listen to all those Peter Crouch ones recently, so you kind of get a rough idea of how they how they roll. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, how's the studio? I've not even seen it yet. Yeah, mate. We've got. Well, we literally got it finished. Uh, when was it now? But on just before lockdown, yeah, so it's like perfect timing, ago. really. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, just been every day in here, really. It's been good. And it's been do you reckon it's mate. made a big difference to your workflow? Massively, mate. Because um, it's just like when we when we used to do my bedroom, it was like you get you're getting up there and um, you've not got the same like inspiration to get going. Well, when we come into this studio, it's like coming to the office for the day. Yeah. So, you know, we started our day at, at nine o'clock or whatever, whatever it is. Do what we need to do, and then we're here till like five. So actually, feels like we're doing like a proper proper working day. Yeah, yeah, that's what I say to people. I think like you're a product of your environment a lot of the time and it makes a big difference. I remember I used to tell people, even if you're just buying a MIDI keyboard, it makes you feel like more you're in a studio. Obviously having an actual studio is the ideal position in it. But even if you movements, if you feel like you're doing something, you're in the right environment, it makes you work better as well. 100%, mate. Like upstairs, we're just basically, there was not even enough space for two of us to sit down, you know, next to each other. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that was a bit, that was a bit shit, but. Like I say, now we're down here, it just feels like you're actually in an office environment, like a proper workspace, and you can just just crack on for the day. Yeah. But at the same that's... time, at the same time though, just before we, before the last track we made in the bedroom, it's probably our, I still think one of our best tracks that we made. Yeah. I don't think you can blame it just on like where you are. No, not at all. It's funny because yeah. I did a few tracks like I think about a month ago, and I was just going outside of a bow speaker in it, and just really just like forgetting about my environment and just making stuff. Um, but yeah. then it makes you appreciate having a studio more as well when you change it, sure. when sure. you get back to the studio and stuff. Um, but yeah, it's, it looks smart, man. Yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely helped with the productivity, mate. 100%. 100%. Yes, well, um, explain a bit how we know each other. It's funny because at the moment, since you did the Horde EP, a bit of promo, uh, people are like, ah, oh, um, who are they? Who are these dudes? I'm like, ah, oh, I've known them for a while, you know. Um, <laughs> Bad dudes. <laughs> um, <laughs> when you actually think about it, it's been a long friendship on it, really. Yeah, mate. Long time. What, how, old, how old were we? Probably like 11? Well, 11, yeah, 11, 12. 12 so something, so that's something now, like that. now 24 to 13 years is quite a long long time, isn't it? It is a long time, mate, yeah. Long time. It's weird when it came about, like, just with yeah. so our mums, really, wasn't it? Yeah, you know, well, long we story short. Yeah, long story short, we went to school together, but then our mums knew, knew each other. Um, and, yeah, we've not look back since really exactly. i think that's what's what's cool about our our crew that it's quite a concentrated area we live in of people that are into tunes yeah. like yeah, it's a tiny exactly. little live in a tiny little village and there's what i know people say everyone's a dj now but there was a point when there was probably a dj epidemic around wilms though weren't there yeah 100 percent. i DJs. think once once one person does it it's like a chain reaction do you know what yeah. i mean you obviously you have seen to it pretty early what were you like into that sort of music around 15, 16, yeah, something like yeah. that, weren't you? Um, so even when we were just sort of, you know, at each other's houses on the weekends when we were younger, you were sort of playing all that stuff. Yeah. And I wasn't, I wasn't really that aware of it, to be honest, at the time. But, um, yeah, over time, it just sort of grew on me. And then, obviously, we got into it more and more and more. And now we're, now we're here. I, I remember the first time I, I seen a pair of decks properly was when you brought them to my bedroom with that bit of a bedroom party and yeah. loads of people around. Uh, that's the first time I've ever seen decks properly. I remember I tried to have a go before we got around and I was absolutely clueless. Didn't have a clue how to beat match, how to do anything. And uh, and then we got our, we got a set of CDJ 50s about, probably about a month later, Seb did. Yeah. And then um, got rolling from there and that's when we all started to try and get into it a bit. Yeah, and then rest is history, isn't it, really? It's funny, it's yeah, like yeah, the yeah. first time, I remember the, the first time I went to Power Dex was one of the spaghetti controllers, you know, one of the Dirty Owls. Yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah. just knew straight away, I was like, oh, I enjoy this. Like, <laughs> I used to think it was rocket science, innit, at the start. You put me yeah, on yeah. a pedestal, like, oh my God, how can you DJ? Um, but it's just like riding a bike, innit? Exactly, mate. Exactly. Got all these old geezers that still whip out the records and that, and then they're ripping them. Um, yeah, yeah, it's so, like, yeah, exactly, like, like just jump straight it. back on it, don't you? Mm. Oh, yeah. Um, so we'll talk about the production like journey as well, because I think what's good about you is it's been a real organic process as well. Um, from going from not having a clue, literally, not even yeah. not knowing how to open Ableton, apart from you bought, <laughs> you bought your, yeah. yeah, you bought your um 303 that time though, 
That's an appointment, yeah, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, yeah, was a, that was a that was a wrong buy. That yeah, that was one of those buys where you buy something and you think that's just going to take you to the next level. Uh, really well, really I don't think I think Seb didn't even know how to open Ableton and he went, come, yeah, on, I went straight. <laughs> I went straight in the deep end with that one. Just bought a three hundred three and and a pair of monitors and I was like, oh god, he means business here. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just been a matter of you guys are a genuine product of just like hard work and just not stopping grafting in it over the years. I think yeah. it took a long time to get to that grafting stage. I think at the start, it was kind of making tunes, maybe struggling to make one tune in two weeks, like really, really like thinking, right, we've got to get one tune made in two weeks and that'll be good enough. And that's what we kind of thought would be all right. And you soon realise, you know, your workflow needs to really... Yeah. I think quick. the more you make, it's simple to tell everyone this, the better you get. Yeah, 100%. Exactly, exactly. You make three tunes in a week, the chances are one of them is going to be decent. But if you make one tune in one month, the chances are that one tune isn't going to be any good. Yeah, it's true, mate. It's true. It's like at first as well, when you're making one track, you feel like you put all your energy into making that one track and it's taking you like, I don't know, a week, or, a week time, yeah. or whatever. And then you think, God, I've got to start again and make a new one. That's how I used to think anyway. But like now, it just becomes like a habit and it's just like a chain. So mm. when you finish one, you just move on to the next one. And like, if it's finished, it's finished. Just move on. And it might be good. It might be bad. But it doesn't matter. You just move on to the next track and the next one's probably going to be better than the last. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I think um, output is such an important thing for, that, for everyone. And people that cruise, even doing one a week, arguably, isn't that much, really. Everyone can no, do No, no, it's not. It doesn't it's take long to a track. When you sit down and put your head down. I think, I think two hours of quality, quality work, you can get an idea down. Anyone can. Yeah. And you're away then. So it's just a matter of, um, I think routine's important as well, isn't it? Like, yeah. like you said before, like now you've got your routine down. But fortunately, in the furlough age that everyone's got now, that you've had the time to do it. But I reckon it's probably, I bet you've taught yourself a lot. Yeah, the discipline yeah massively, getting, massively. And shit done. But like we were saying the other day, like with the, with the furlough thing, or if you're not working at the moment, you know, even in this time, you're either going to do it or you're just not going to do it. Mm. It's one of, it goes either way. Uh, I was like, now, especially since we started doing this furlough, we've been doing lots and lots of tunes. Yeah. And like you said, it just made you realize that you can actually do it within, you know, a day or two days. Yeah. The track should be, yeah. should be 100% done after two days, really. Um, yeah. And then you can move on to the next one. So just, it just like I say, with, with all the time we've got now, uh, it shows that, you know, you can, you can make a tune in no time. Whereas before, in my head, a tune was like a week because I was working yeah um so it's hard to fit the timing but it like is hard now, that isn't it? the whole dilemma of like time yeah. does get you better results mm -hmm. it is hard when you've got to work but i guess that means you've just got to have a good routine as well yeah well, if, even before when we were working we were, we were pretty strict with it when we got home from work it was those few hours that you had was music then bed then work then obviously repeat the next day and obviously weekends when you've got more time as well yeah. Try not to go out sometimes on unnecessary ones is, <laughs> is a good one. Yeah. yeah I think uh, at the start done. as well. As easier said than done. Yeah. At the start, so we would make a duty completely separately. And obviously, then you, you really uh, yeah. and you tracks to each other rather than actually putting your minds together and making something probably better. And uh, say, when we, when we first started coming to you, say we're both doing it on our own. And well, that's a good point. Yeah, go on. That's a good point to talk about. Like, for anyone that doesn't know, you two are actually brothers. Yeah, Local yeah I know. Some, brothers. Some some people think we're twins. Yeah, some yeah. people think we're nothing else. After a few <laughs> beers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. So so yeah, you're actually brothers. So it must be good, I guess. Like John, a brother. I've got a brother. It's a different kind of bond in it. So yeah, else. sometimes like, good. Sometimes can be bad for your case, yeah. I guess. <laughs> yeah. Some, sometimes bad in the way that we can. Two so couples sometimes, I guess, with each other. Yeah, yeah, you get, yeah, get, we get bickers here and there, but I say it all comes down to wanting to get the right result at the end of it, really. Uh, but it's uh, you can be really yeah. transparent with each other, I guess. Though, if you don't agree on something, it's quite yeah, nice. yeah. It's yeah. easy just to it's easy just yeah. to speak up and say, no, nah, I don't think that's working. Let's try this. Um, but even before, but obviously, before before all this even started, right at the start, we were obviously producing separately. Yeah. Um, and then obviously we went away to Ibiza and you and Kurt obviously said, I don't know why we didn't think of this before, but you know, why, why aren't you guys producing together? Yeah. And it well, just I think what's good is you actually earned, learned your craft on your own because you actually were yeah. different. You you di you I saw firsthand you both had different strengths and made different kind of tunes. So yeah. Because the fact you did it separately, I see a lot of people actually do things in crews and stuff. And the ones that actually learn on their own always tend to like, do better. 
You know, if you're mm-hmm. learning as a group and stuff, you kind of just depend on each other sometimes, I think. Yeah. Because you're doing it your own, you have to just learn yourself, innit? You weren't going to be like, oh, like you do that, you do this. You just did it yourself. And I think that it definitely helped when you did it together then. Yeah, definitely. And then when you combine, you can sort of bring different things to the table a little bit in terms of what your stronger at, drums, synths, whatever it mm-hmm. might be. Yeah, I think it got to a stage where I was saying, when we were making tracks on our own, I was making a track, then said to make a track, and I go, oh, no, I like your track more. Then he go, I like your track more. And that's when the obvious situation is to come together and do it together. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think it's a good point, working together. And then he set up as well. I remember I gave you a big, uh, I think it was a part, after party speech about getting some hardware. And I think for you guys, yeah. I tell everyone this, before you get hardware, it seems like such a brain melter, like where do you even start? But it's mm-hmm. so simple, isn't it? Yeah, buy a synth, plug it in, and then you immediately just preset flick, record sounds in. And I think that was a big game changer for you guys, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. We've got We've got bought the um, uh, Dave Smith Profit uh, Rev 2. That was the first piece of hardware we bought. And the start, like I say, it seemed like where there were so many dials on it, you don't know where to load next. But I think once you just take the time, step back, and actually, like I say, just preset flick through. You can find some really cool sounds. Obviously, over time, you learn how to like, um, develop your skills on it and yeah. master it, which is probably until that now really understanding how to, how to yeah. use it to its full potential. Um, but you just got to, yeah, you've got to stick with it's it. Just, and, uh, but yeah. even just recording sounds from it, I can tell everyone this, just go and buy a, a £300 cold mm-hmm. mini log. I know it's £300, but go and get something and just have your hands... It comes back to what's yeah. at the start about having a synth in front of you. There's something about that that makes you kind of want to work a it's bit much harder. It's a fun way to work. Yeah, it's a much fun way to work for yeah. sure. It's actually hands on. You always said that to me. Like you, you feel like you're actually yeah. making the music, making tunes. It feels like yeah. you actually know what you're yeah. doing, even if you don't even use it. Just having it there, I think, in the room just gives you that kind of energy. Definitely, and obviously, you get better sounds than you do with your plugins and all 100%. that sort of thing as well. Hundred percent, questionable. Um, so we should talk about the Iron Mullen EP because I think that's a lot of people I've spoke to everyone's like oh this track is sick there's definitely a buzz about it um, yeah. so let's the tracks came about over you must have made them all in the last six months or so well yeah 100% but, well two, two of them were literally made within lockdown so oh, those first months of lockdown, yeah the first, so the first two are really pretty recent ones and then the other two yeah within definitely within six months this yeah. year definitely yeah, because it was quite funny because it was quite a quick turnaround because I put you in touch really with him and then he was all over the track straight away. And it's not yeah. often you can really turn an EP around between the tracks and it was like, what, six weeks? It was on pre-sale. Less than that. It was like two weeks, wasn't it? Yeah, no, it was about, it was about, about six weeks, yeah. How was six it? Weeks. Well, that's yeah, quality, yeah. I think. And I think it's a real... Um, I think people have really taken to it because it sounds fresh. Yeah, we've had some good, some nice comments on it. Definitely a lot of people liking it. So, yeah, it's gone down well, mate. And, uh, yeah. Can't and wait to see it get out there, to be honest. And what the other labels? I'll let you pronounce the name of that other label. <laughs> uh, uh, so there's one, there's one more coming up on. That's going to be a VA on Nuance de Nuit, uh, <laughs> which is <laughs> which yeah. is like uh, which is a London-based label. They've had some really cool yeah, releases six, already. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the last one was with uh, Huerta, Liquid Earth. Um, the, just check them out. The other, th- the other three, the other three releases. A bit amazing before. Yeah, it's a cool it's label. Really, like, really good label, actually. And when I talked about making uh, that last track that we did in there before we actually moved out to the studio in the bedroom, that's the track that's going to be released yeah, on yeah. this label. Um, yeah. And I say this, this was the track that I really wanted to uh, release on a on a label like this. So, so that 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 turnaround for that that uh, that EP was uh, also quite quick, really. Um, yeah. So no, not it's not been released yet, uh, but it's. Yeah, yeah, I think it's come together pretty well. I think I always told you that when you released again with the A list, you wanted some substance with it. You wanted mm-hmm. to kind of ping them together. I think EPs on their own don't really stand up. They just kind of get heard exactly. and lost. But I think the way you've yeah. got that, got the VA, and no doubt we'll get the U and Me EP sorted soon with the U and Me digital EP actually as well. So when yeah. it all comes together, it makes a bit more of momentum. Yeah, when people stuff on that kind of stuff. I think you need more than one kind of prong on your attack to get actually get people listening to you really. 100% like like you say there's a, there's a we've got a few in the pipeline so it's a good it's a good kickstart to uh to give like you say give some substance to the name really. Yeah. Um, so if I wait to get it all out there. Yeah. So I also we'll talk about well actually we won't talk about the next EP because you signed the other one but wait till that's all locked and loaded yeah, isn't it? Wait till that's confirmed. So what do you reckon studio wise next? Any more gear? 
hundred percent. I think, I think, I think, so. I think, um, I think next month I, will, I would like to look at another synth. Um, I was looking at like a Yamaha, some th- something along those lines. Get some classic, really yeah. classic '90s sounds from one of those. Um, there's a few things that we want to upgrade. Actually, the speakers as well. Yeah. Speakers are a really a big thing that we kind of looking on changing to us. Because say we were looking at a new synth, and then we kind of really. Uh, use profit to its full potential and the orbit as well. We've had that for quite a while, but more recently, um, just started to get much better sounds out of it. Nothing for no other reason than just playing nicer chords or for whatever yeah. reason. Uh, but so for that, so because we've got these two synths working to their full potential, um, it's like, do, do we really need to add something just yet? So that's why we thought the speakers might be a, a better, um, a better addition. Well, my tip would be invest in acoustic treatment before you get speakers. That's- yeah, that's what I was going to say. Someone asked me about this the other day. Should I buy some general? People, two people asked me about Genelec recently. That's what we were doing. And, I'm, and I'm like, it's like buying amazing wheels and put them on a fucking Ford Fiesta. Do you know what I mean? Buying yeah, yeah. No point. You need to have good acoustics first. Otherwise, it's completely pointless. I think yeah. speakers are literally only as good as the room they're in. Like, you could put a pair of shit speakers in an amazing sounding room and they would sound good. But you can't put unreal speakers in a shit sounding room that will still sound shit. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. A tip for you and anyone listening would be invest in acoustics first. There's plenty of sites. So there's that Vi Acoustics. I think I sent you it a while ago. Yeah, but we've had a look. Even just like it's um, though, isn't it? just yeah. It's, I mean, it's not cheap, but like you say, it's definitely worth it. Mm. Um, like you say, it's going to give you a better sound in your room. It's only going to help make your productions better. So it's 100 worth the investment. Like that KRK top right, I can see that's a fucking bass trap if I've ever seen one. May I know those those K- those KRKs are indestructible, mate. They've been um, around for about six years. They're, they're on the way out, though. Where there's one behind. Yeah, I'm going to get some new monitors, mate. From a, I'm going to I was going to get some. I want to get some hung from the roof, but I found some like cool hi-fi ones. Ryan what, Murray showed me yesterday. Is this for uh for you for production? When I put, or? The, when I put the decks in there, I want to put my KRKs in here to use them as reference monitors. Well, like, that's yeah. what you could do. Keep your keep your KRKs because you know them so well, like me. I know what tune should sound like on them. So you yeah, keep yeah. them and you, then you can switch between your two monitors. So I can yeah, use my yeah. Genelex for my mix downs and then keep checking on my KRK. And then you just keep changing between the two. Yeah, that's not my idea, actually. And I have some yeah. new monitors in there because what I want it to be a bit more aesthetic and I don't think KRKs look that good. Nah. They're a bit more... Nah, they don't look like that smart, do they? No. I think they, they, used, to, they used to be a bit of a buzz, but... Um, the new ones are out as well. The new ones look pretty smart. I've seen them. The new ones do actually look better than them ones. Yeah, they definitely. do look nice. So I've got a good question for you that I want to ask everyone that's in the podcast. So I'll word it slowly. What do you know now that you wish you knew then? So, back, so what do we know now from compared to when we first started? Yeah. I've got, I've got a good one for this. Go um, definitely. I've not already asked them this, by the way. This is on the spot. The whole thing's on the spot. None of this is planned. I know, that I know this question easily. It's, it's definitely to move on with tracks. Don't get attached to tracks. Yeah, I think at the start, I used to get... From when we made, from when I made the music on my own, to when I even when I made them myself, uh, getting attached to tracks. So I did, I almost didn't want to move on to the next one because I thought this one was so good. But I think if you just move on, um, you'll always um, make something better. So that that'll be definitely for me. Such so a good I'll point. It's, and think, it's like now, I think obviously within reason. If if someone said yeah. to you like, "That's not good," that bit in the track, you just got to learn to don't be. It's like you don't, the, the music is different to you. You, you as a person is you, yeah. but the mu- you're not the music. Don't get offended by it. Someone says they don't like it. I struggle with it bad. I'm uh, so, yeah. bad. my pride, if someone says like, even if someone says something like little, I'm like, I'm like, no, nah, it's not. I didn't ask you for feedback anyway, mate. But like, it's all about <laughs> like, you've got to be, detach yourself from the music. The music is, you're not defined by a piece of music anyway. Then just, if you make an idea and someone doesn't like it, just like, you just got to get over it. And don't take it personally. Yeah. That's a big thing in it with, it's hard yeah. when you spend a lot of the tune and then someone doesn't like it. But I think that's what I'm, tr- I'm trying to learn. It's, it's easier to said than done, isn't it? When he makes a creation, then I look back a week later, I'm like, that wasn't even good. Um, but at the time, it's just knowing that your, the music is not you. You're not defined by one track. So don't become a too attached to it. I think that's a fucking good point. I, def- I definitely think that's the biggest thing, though, 100%. Because like you say, at the start, it's so easy. You put all your energy and effort into making this one track and it's taking yeah. you like, I don't know, a week or two weeks or whatever. And you want it to be perfect. And you could have just started just, a new loop, and just, just start a new one, man, because it's always going to be so almost, Yeah, it's almost telling yourself that track's not actually that good. Like you say, like that's when you're really 
break down a barrier and like move on. I said it to yeah. quite a few people actually. I said it to quite a few people off. Yeah, I think it's funny because I think that some people I'll do a lesson with them and they'll we'll work on a track all lesson. This is probably the best example. And I'm like they go home and I'm like, go and make a new track. And they go home and work yeah. on that track again. I went, Yeah, yeah. yeah. Take what I've taught you and go on to the next thing. Yeah, like, play put it. This into, you've not made the best you've not made the best record like it's not hungry for the power is it just just, get, just <laughs> yeah. um, exactly mate. But it's, again it's like another, another thing is is try and i know it's difficult to start when you're still learning but try and just work as quick as you can that's sort of like same thing as as not like dwelling on a track but like just just do it and then like if it's not working just just bin it and move on to the next one yeah it's uh, so true right. that as well i think working like quick say, working quick's good because if you I swear to, I don't think I've ever, apart from a few times maybe with a melody, I don't think I've ever spent longer on a sound and found it got better. It's usually been right straight away with everything, and they, although it's not. Like, same with arrangement and everything. If I don't get the arrangement right straight away, the structure just tends, the track just tends to be pretty, like, average. Mm, yeah. Yeah. We're still still guilty of that now, though. Even, but that's, that's a good thing about working with a duo. Like, if, if, for example, I'll find a sound and we'll go, yeah, that sounds good, and then sometimes I'll go, Oh, let's just let's just try and find something else, and then yeah. that's when Emil will go, no, no, we need to stick yeah. with that one, and we'll put it set for hard because it. it's that you'll waste that, a bit of time. It's that fine balance between you don't want to just settle for averageness and settle for what you yeah. find straight away, mm-hmm. but then also you don't want to get hung up on changing a spending two hours in a baseline. It's, it's not. Yeah, yeah. Imagine you did that for every sound. It's not good. For me, I just try and get the ideas down, and then if I think the baseline could be better when I've got everything else down, I'll change it. So kind of, I'm always moving forward. The line goes forward. Yeah. Not, if you kind of get stuck at one thing and you go up and down, it's just demotivating. Mm-hmm. But if you just well, keep we, going forward, it's better. Well, the most recent track we made, I think we got to finish like yesterday day before, um, we did exactly that. We did, it was made for um, um, a stab and we went back and forth with the stab, must have changed the sound about three times, preset flicked about an hour. And then I just went, we heard this stab in this track that we were, we were looking for the other day. And we said, why don't we just put that in? I know what you think, like, your mind could just comes to that conclusion way quicker. Yeah, but yeah. They, sometimes it does take that, I don't know, messed around almost to... to yeah, kind it's of all part of learning those. though. It's, it's all part of learning as well. Like you do have to kind of do them, waste a whole day on arrangement to kind of realise that, fuck, that mm. didn't need to happen. Yeah, exactly. You, kind of learn. you learn from your mistakes, as they say. Definitely. But yeah, I think that's um, a lot of points covered. Mm. So next gig, none of us have got any gigs. Yeah, it's going um, to be a while, that unfortunately. Yeah, it's going to next week, and luckily you aren't there, so I can play for 20 hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, that'll be good, that'll be good, that, mate. I'm actually yeah. a bit gutter yeah. missing it, but um, yeah, we're going, we're going away next week, so it'd be nice just to get a bit of sun, have a break. And then Definitely. Like, break yeah. from the beats will do you some good as well. I think you'll be able to get that's a good perspective of how far you've come in lockdown and then really yeah, come yeah, fresh Yeah, definitely, definitely. I say that to me all the time, though, like, you've got to look you got to remember where you are and look back at where you were like even a year ago or six months oh, ago that's the one just, man just to show the progression yeah yourself. it's like sometimes with everything you're just like you're kind of like oh you're not you don't feel content sometimes but when you look back you really can be like fucking hell i've achieved that and then you exactly enjoy the moment enjoying the process is the most important thing yeah. because no goal is ever going to get is going to be like you could get booked to dc 10 tomorrow and it'd wear off after three days it wouldn't yeah. be like true happiness you've got to enjoy the process every day yeah. You got to actually enjoy just doing this, making tunes every day. Well, yeah, yeah. No gigs on it, but the next thing will be the Iron Mullen EP, which will be linked wherever this is posted. Link below. Pre-order it. Yeah, it yeah, should yeah that should be sure should be out in next month. That'll in a month's yeah, time or end, so. End, end of July, or so I would say maybe maybe August. Uh, but yeah, hopefully, hopefully it does well. I think I think it's hard to get through specs when you track sometimes. And obviously, you've heard it so many times making it. It's hard. It's good to see what people yeah. think. Like I said, I think it's gone down well. It just you'll 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 see, won't you? But uh, yeah, it's, it'd be good to get people's perspective on it. Well, hopefully, this goes viral. This podcast, so then it'll be easy, won't it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. This will be watching. Oh, this, um, this will be watching this in twenty twenty five and going on Discord to buy it. Hopefully, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it could, yeah, could be like a sixty pound gem by then. I, I want an eighty at least. <laughs> but whenever you're watching this, go on Discord and see how much it is and let us know. Yeah, well, hopefully we'll be playing dc 10 tonight or something when someone's watching yeah but yeah by then that'll probably be uh probably be happening then won't yeah. it? right sweet i think we can wrap it up there then yeah oh, sound, mate. sound sound right safe boys yeah safe. Sure, mate. take it